Hello, welcome to these three lectures on machine theory. We will we will briefly review uh, Riemann integration and then go on to describe uh, uh, Lebesgue integration. I'll not be proving anything. Uh, I'll give an overview of uh, uh, Lebesgue measure and integration. Uh, which is an extension of uh, Riemann integration, uh, but without giving uh, proofs of the theorem. So, there are three major theorems which I will state uh, and we will see some examples uh, at the end. Uh, okay, so let me start with uh, showing you the uh, notes and then I will explain as we go along. Okay. So, we have uh, Riemann degradation uh, for bounded functions. So, boundedness is important here. Uh, f is a function defined in an interval a b taking values in the real line. So, we will stick to real valued functions. Okay, Most of what I am saying can be done for uh, uh, complex valued functions as well. Uh, now, you divide a b into several intervals. Uh, smaller interval. So, I have uh, you know if you look at the uh, picture you see how it is. Uh, the interval a b is divided into smaller intervals and uh, uh, m i small m i is the infimum of, uh, of the function f in the interval a i to a i plus 1 and uh, capital m i is the supremum. So, you know both of these should be finite. So, that is where the boundedness uh, matters. And then you form the lower sum and upper sum. So, lower sum is summation m i into a i plus 1 minus a i. So, what is a i plus 1 minus a i? So, that is simply the uh, length of the interval a i to a i plus 1, right. So, you are multiplying the uh, infimum of f in an interval in times the length of the interval and similarly for the upper sum. Upper sum is the uh, supremum of f in an interval times the length of that interval. So, if you look at the picture you will see the red lines uh, denote the infimum of the function in that interval and uh, green ones give you the supremum and multiplying uh, the supremum or the infimum with the length of the interval will give you the area of that particular bar right uh, as in the histogram you have those bars. and lower sums will give you the area under the integral of the bars right. So, it is a smaller portion than the area under the integral and similarly uh, the upper sum gives you the area of the uh, bigger bars right. So, when you sum up you will get something more than the area under the integral and uh, we say f is uh, Riemann integrable if uh, you take the uh, so let me go down a little bit you take the limit of this upper sums and lower sums as mod p goes to 0. So, p is a partition mod p is the supremum of the length of the intervals you have ok. If that goes to 0 and if these two lower sums and upper sums converge to the same value then we say f is Riemann integrable and it we denote it by integral a to b f of x dx. Okay, so, integral a to b f of x dx is a symbol which denotes the limit of either the lower sums or the upper sums. They are equal, they are so, they, they should be equal for f to be uh, Riemann integrable. And uh, you know from the picture it is clear that it will converge to the area under the integral, uh, area under the curve. Okay, so that is why you say the Riemann integral is the area under the curve of uh, or the graph of f. Okay, so, let us uh, let us continue. Now, in, uh, in Riemann integration what we did was to uh, divide the domain of f into smaller intervals and you formed this Riemann sums upper sums or lower sums and then looked at finer and finer divisions right finer and finer partitions and then you take limit. And that is what you call Riemann integral. Lebesgue's idea, so well, it was clear in the uh, uh, early or maybe late uh, 19th uh, century that Riemann integration was not enough uh, to do a lot of analysis. <coughs> 
uh, because there were several functions which one could not uh, integrate in the Riemann sense. Continuous functions are Riemann integrable. Uh, that's already a big class, but there were several other functions which uh, analysts wanted to uh, integrate and that was not possible. Uh, so, it was uh, felt that it was necessary to extend the Riemann integration to various other class of functions and that is where Lebesgue's idea became crucial. Uh, so, this was very early 20th century, so 1904, uh, that's when Lebesgue, I guess, uh, published his paper. Uh, so, Lebesgue's idea uh, fundamentally differed from uh, Riemann's idea in looking at uh, the range of the function instead of the domain of the function and dividing the range of the function into smaller intervals. Uh, and then you take inverse image of those smaller intervals and associate a certain length to that uh, uh, set. So, uh, so if I look at an interval i which is contained in the range of f, so if you look at the graph you see that, you look at inverse image of i. So, inverse image of i is all those points x uh, in the interval a b which is mapped into i. Okay, so it's not inverse as a function. Okay, so it's a it's a map inverse image of i with all those points x uh, which are in the domain of f which are mapped into i. Now f inverse of i in this uh, uh, this picture f inverse of i will be a nice interval. But if I have a different kind of a function f inverse of i need not be an interval. But then Lebesgue's idea was to uh, define a notion of length to these kind of sets. Okay, so let us uh, let us try to understand that. So, you go down a little bit. Uh, so, define a uh, notion of uh, length to all this f of f inverse of i's. So, this length is the uh, Lebesgue measure m. Okay, we will denote it by m. If I have a suitable subset of the real line. I can define its Lebesgue measure, we will come to that soon. And then uh, Lebesgue did exactly what Riemann did, choose some values in i and sum up as in the Riemann degradation. So, you have this f inverse, so, uh, so if i1, i2, in etcetera partition range of f and if you choose uh, points x1 in i1, x2 in i2 etcetera, then you can consider a sum summation x j. So, in Riemann degradation x j was uh, either the supremum or the infimum in certain interval, but that interval was in the domain. Here we are looking at the range and dividing the range into various intervals and uh, you choose these values x j and multiply by m of f inverse of i j. So, I have not defined what is m, m is the measure or the length of the set f inverse i j. Of course, if f inverse i j is an interval, then the length is what you already know, right? And uh, if I have a interval a b, the length is b minus a, right? But there can be sets which are not intervals like rationals, irrationals or rationals contained in an interval like 0, 1, etc. Various kinds of sets or disjoint union of intervals and so on. So, one has to define length for such sets, okay? If you can do that, you can form something like this and then see what happens when these the partitions become smaller and smaller. That was Lebesgue's idea and that became hugely successful and it was, uh, uh, it became extremely useful in developing uh, analysis. Okay, so let us, uh, let us look at a very simple example before we formally define things. Uh, for example, consider a step function g. Okay, so, I have this interval a to b which I call a1 and divide to a1, a2, a3, a4, a5 and in each interval the function g is a constant. Such a function is called a step function. Okay? Of course, in this uh, picture the, uh, the function g is positive, it need not be, it can be any value. Okay, so, in the first interval the value is alpha 1, second interval the value is alpha 2 and so on. Okay. So, if I have a, a, a step function then of course, it is Riemann integrable that is easy to show and the, what is the integral? Integral a to b g x dx is 
in each interval you will get alpha j times the length of that interval right that is the Riemann degree and that you can see is simply alpha j times m of m remember is the length of g inverse alpha j ok. So, g inverse of alpha j is the interval a j a j to a j plus 1 and you look at the length of that interval that is a j plus 1 minus a j and multiply by a value in the range right that is alpha j. So, this is precisely what happens with the step function and for step functions this procedure which I uh, defined uh, as Lebesgue's idea and Riemann's integral are essentially the same right you can see it here. But one has to do this in a much more general uh, setup because the function need not be a step function always. So, if you look at this uh, procedure the first hurdle you see is that how to define the length of complicated sets right. So, to define length of complicated sets uh, one needs a good class of uh, sets and a notion of the length which should satisfy various properties ok. So, let us uh, let us try to do that. So, we need to define length of complicated sets. So, if i is an interval then m of i that is the length of i should be the usual length ok. So, measure of i should be the usual length of the interval. Remember the interval could be positive uh, sorry interval could be uh, closed interval, open interval or one side closed, other side open and all that, but they all have the same length right because adding one point does not really uh, change anything. So, an interval a b whether it is closed, open, open its length is b minus a. You want that property to continue to hold and it is natural to expect that if I have two disjoint intervals then the length of the union should be the sum of the length of the individual intervals right. So, m of i 1 union i 2 uh, should be equal to m i 1 plus m i 2 right if i 1 and i 2 are disjoint. Now, for analytical reasons we demand a little more ok you will see why this uh, countable additivity as we call it is necessary. So, countable additivity is if I have i j disjoint intervals. So, as of now we are still sticking to intervals then I want the additive property to extend to the union of disjoint intervals countably many disjoint intervals ok. So, m of union i j should be summation m i j that is called the countable additivity property and that is very important uh, property of a measure. Okay, so, this is what you mean by a countable additive measure and that, that is what helps in uh, dealing with uh, limits of uh, integrals ok, we will see that. <coughs> so, the class of sets these are going to be subsets of uh, the real line where this notion of length is defined is the Lebesgue sigma algebra. So, I will define what that is soon. So, as I was saying earlier the length the notion of the length we uh, require should satisfy or we need should satisfy some properties like this joint sets should have uh, when you take the union the length should add up and so on. So, it turns out that it is not possible to define it on all subsets ok. So, there are various conceptual reasons technical reasons why this is not possible I will not get into that, but there is a collection of sets of subsets of the real line where this notion of length can be defined and we call that Lebesgue sigma algebra. So, let me define what a sigma algebra is. So, let script f be a class of subsets of real line f is said to be a sigma algebra if first of all the empty set the real line should be in f if second condition if a is a set in f script f then a complement should be there that means the collection of sets you are looking at is closed under taking complements and the third one if a j are uh, in f then a j for j equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, that is a countably many uh, uh, sets in f then their union should also be there 
okay. So, there are three conditions empty set whole space should be there, it is closed under complementation and closed under countable union. Now, if you because the complementation is there, if it is closed under countable union, it will be closed under countable intersection as well, right? Because if you take the union and take the complement, then you are going to get the intersection, okay? So, there are lots of things you can do with this complementation and the union. You will get intersections. You can look at A and B and look at A minus B. A minus B is A intersection B complement that will also be there and so on. So, most of the set theoretic operations you do as long as you are doing countably many times, you will still land in your sigma algebra, okay. So, simplest example um, uh, is if, if I take a subset of the real line and simply look at script F to be uh, phi the empty set, the real line they should be there. And if I put A, I know A complement should be there, so I put A complement as well, then countable unions, but you know there are only finitely many sets and you will see that this is the, this is the sigma algebra, okay. So, this is the smallest sigma algebra containing A, smallest sigma algebra makes sense, okay. So, intersection of sigma algebra is a sigma algebra, so smallest sigma algebra will make sense. Now, the smallest sigma algebra containing all open intervals of the real line is called the Borel sigma algebra of R, okay. So, that is a rather large sigma algebra. You look at all open sets or all open intervals and look at the smallest sigma algebra containing all open intervals. So, you have all open intervals, you take the complement, so you will get all closed sets, then you can take intersections, then you can take unions and so on, okay. So, it has lots of sets, all of them will be in the Borel sigma algebra script B of R. Uh, notice that open sets are in BR because any open sets in the real line is a countable union of open intervals. So, that will be in BR. So, any closed set will be there because all open sets are there and the B and BR is closed under complementation. So, closed set is the complement of an open set. So, that will be there and any interval uh, for example, a open interval like A B closed at A open at B that is the intersection n equal to 1 to infinity a minus 1 by n comma b open right open sets are there. So, countable intersection of open intervals are there. So, this particular interval a b will be there ok. Similarly, singletons are there because singletons are closed sets countable union of singletons will be countable sets any countable set will be a Borel set or a set in the Borel sigma algebra like the rationals will be there. And since rationals are there, it is complement, which is all irrationals, that will also be a Borel set, okay. So, B of R is a rather large collection of sets already, okay. So, it is, uh, it is an instructive exercise to, you know, write down various sets and see if it is a Borel set or not, okay. So, let us, uh, let us go further. Um, now, so, we are going to define uh, what is known as outer measure first. This is defined for a for any subset of the real line, okay. So, if I take a subset A uh, of the real line, you can define its outer measure. So, outer measure of A by M star of A. So, M star is the notation for outer measure. M star of A equal to infimum over summation J equal to 1 to infinity mod Ij. 